Affinity is allowing people access to high-end features without making them become professional 3D users. We allow the artist to be the creator. We find that it takes about an hour to learn how to use the program, the basics, to be able to get in and actually create your own animations. It's very interactive. Whenever you do something, the program responds. I move it, it moves. I see a bounding box of where it's moving. I can rotate objects and I see how much it's rotating interactively. But when I change this thing, all I have to do is double click on it and we'll enter our lathe editor. Anything that I draw on this side of the screen, it's automatically going to be shown on this side of the screen. So, for example, I draw some outline, it instantly turns it to a 3D object. It's very interactive and this is very fast so that if I draw, say, the outline of a goblet here, it's going to immediately turn it into a goblet for me. If you want to get some smooth outlines in here, we have a great interface to products like Adobe Illustrator or Aldous Freehand. So let me launch Adobe Illustrator here. This is a terrific front end to actually creating objects in Illustrator which you can then bring into Infinity. So I'm just going to draw the outline of a goblet in Illustrator, get a nice smooth spline based outline here. Okay, now, question is, how do I get this from Illustrator to Infinity? I go in here in Illustrator and say I want to create a publisher. And I'll call this my Goblet Publish. And I say Publish. And now I come back to Infinity and I say Subscribe To. And I'll subscribe to my Goblet. And it's going to bring in the EPS, bring it in there, crack it, and then turn it into a 3D object. So now, when I go back to Illustrator, any change that I make is automatically reflected in Infinity. So I just double click and say Send Edition Now, and it automatically updates inside Infinity. Now this is an extrude object. So if I double click on this, I'm now editing an extrude. So for example, if I draw a circle, it turns to a cylinder. If I draw a square, it turns to a cube. And if I import EPS and go and open up my Hilton logo, it takes the points cracks them, turns them into a 3D object, and I get a 3D logo type. So when I exit back into my world, I actually have a smooth shaded version, so I can shrink it, and squash and stretch it, get some really dy dynamic effects here. I can uh, rotate it. Now, lights in Infinity are incredibly simple. You just pick a light from your light palette here, and you click in your scene, and it's automatically gonna place down a light. You notice that my lighting is already changed. I can double click on my light, and I can make the light any color I want. So I can get sort of like a reddish light. And now you'll notice that I'm going to get kind of a red effect. And if I move my light, I can interactively see my lighting change. So I just drag it, and it automatically changes the lighting on my object. I can also, if I double click on the light, make it to a spotlight, where I can adjust the focus and the angle, so I can get some, some really cool dynamic lighting effects just by double clicking. And then all I have to do is take my light and say, point at the extrude object, and it will point right at it. We've really optimized our anti-aliasing algorithm so you can get some terrific results out of it. So I'm just going to put on the lowest setting and it's going to zip through here and it's going to oversample so it's looking extra hard at the 3D geometry and it's going to, you see here, we get a really nice smooth edge on our object. We can open up our surface floater and we can apply different surfaces. So let me make this uh, red plastic here. Once you're finished, we can write this out with an alpha channel. Then I can open up some background such as these clouds here. And when I select paste, it's going to paste it in and so that I'm not going to see any seam whatsoever along the edge because it's using the anti-aliasing information to composite into the background. So here we go, I select paste, and there you go, you get an absolutely gorgeous, slick, seamless composite. And so you can take this element and put it on any background you want. Okay, this is a lamp from Replicas Volume 1. This is our sequencer. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make one second of animation. So I take my time marker and I drag it to one second. I'm now changing the world at one second. I'm going to say at one second I want my ball here to move across the screen and I want to rotate it. So now if I look at my camera view, I can actually see the ball rotate across the screen because I have a real time preview. At a quarter of a second, I'm going to grab the base of the lamp and I'm going to drag it over so it appears to sort of notice the ball. I'm going to pick the lamp light. There's actually a light inside of here. And I'm going to say point at the ball. It's going to point right at it. So now, when I move it, it appears to notice the ball as it comes in. 
and watch it as it goes. All right, so we're ready to make an animation. So I'm going to spool this out. I'll spool it out as a fast shade. I have some options I can set here, anti-aliasing level. I choose a frame rate. I'll do 15 frames a second. I'll render this out as a QuickTime movie, so I'll call this my lamp animation. And I can save it as QuickTime. I'll click Save. And now it's going to render out each frame into a QuickTime movie. I just hit play, and I can immediately see my animation. Or if I want to go all out, I can see it in a ray trace mode. This is the highest quality you can get out of the Mac. So you get re reflection, shadows, transparencies. You can see here, the, the light is actually now casting a shadow on itself. It's a self-shadowing object, since it goes behind there. So you can really get some, some great effects. And it's very, very easy to create things like this now with Infinity. It's like having a, a movie camera for your imagination. Almost anything you can think of, you can visualize on the Mac. We've launched Infinity, Specular's 3D modeling, rendering, and animation software. And as you can see from this tool menu, it gives you some basic primitive shapes, which can be enlarged, compressed. You've got a lathe tool for doing imagery, such as wine glasses, bottles, lamps, an extrusion tool, which is used for extruding any imagery that you might import as EPS files from Freehand or Illustrator. I'm going to demonstrate how you would use the lathe tool to create something like a wine glass. So I'll go into the modeling window, which gives me the tools that I need to create an image that will start as a profile and be rotated around a 360 degree axis. Give you a brief idea of how you'd work with this. You can see how quickly the geometry was constructed from that outline. And in this window, I can rotate it a number of ways to check how it looks. At this point, when I'm satisfied with what I've built, I'll go back into my windows. They give me my orthographic views as well as a camera view. At this point, I can enlarge or reduce this image. It can be rotated in any direction. And it can be fast rendered so that I can get an idea of what it looks like with my light sources, which gives you a very hard edged shape. Or we can choose a better quality. Now, this is how you would do anything like a lamp, uh, a lamp shade, anything circular, as you can see uh, from this image. You have the ability to build multiple images from extruded geometric shapes, such as type, text. I'm going to open a file that we've already built. I'm going to import some text. And watch how quickly this generates 3D geometry. It's already done. As quickly as it comes in, it's extruded. And then we can assign any one of six different bevel types. And we have the ability to adjust that bevel concavity and depth. And this is a feature that I have not seen in even the high-end system, so this is very unique. After we extrude and bevel the text, we'd want to apply a surface. You can generate new surfaces or import surfaces generated in Photoshop or another paint program. You get a small ray-traced image in here, which will give you an idea of what your assignments will look like. You can select your color with the color picker and change its intensity with this slider. So if I wanted a gold, I would color this gold and increase my metallicity and my shininess, and basically just tweak these sliders until I get the kind of imagery that I'm looking for. You have lights that can be plotted anywhere in the image. The lights can have color. They can be point lights, which give off light in all directions, or spotlights, which will direct light in one direction. The focus of that light can be adjusted with this slider to make it soft or hard-edged. And the beam angle has control for how wide or how tight the spot is. Well, you can see that Infinity is a pretty powerful 3D package for the Mac platform. And there are certainly a number of them out there. But I personally feel that the power of this program uh, in relation to its cost is outstanding. 
I've worked on the high-end systems, and this offers a lot of the capabilities there are for corporate productions of logo fly-ins, as well as movie opens or news opens for broadcast. I think Infinity, for the price, offers you probably the best combination of features that there is available. This is an example of an animation that incorporated After Effects, Photoshop, and Infinity produced over the course of a weekend. So I think you can see from this demonstration that graphics previously generated on a very high-end, very expensive platform can now be done on a desktop platform with very affordable programs. It gives you broadcast quality output, outputs in field to any tape format, and the best part is it's affordable.